Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I am a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about the eye. We're going to talk about the iris, pigmentation, the light lighter, and the constrictor muscle, uh, embryology of the eye, the lens, the capsule. Uh, we'll talk about the zonules, um, retinal cells, uh, the features, functions, the blind spot, and the choroid is what we'll talk about today. Uh, here's a canal of slim, trabecular meshwork, and another view. Uh, this is an iris, and the iris here we can see it has dilated muscle in through there, and it has uh, pigmented cells. Blood vessels, remember, the iris was part of the vascular area, uh, uh, layer uh, of the eye, and it has blood vessels inside there. Had to have continuous capillaries to prevent uh, antigens from going in through there because the, uh, uh, the aqueous, there's a blood aqueous barrier. So blood-borne components uh, 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 have a hard time getting through. They don't, we don't want them actually into uh, the, uh, the liquid of the eye. Cellular processes, as I mentioned, uh, you have secretory cells on the outside and then they become pigmented on the iris. The pigmented layer of the, of the ciliary processes become the dilated muscle. And so we have dilated muscle. Dilated muscle is myoepithelium. It's not smooth muscle. It's myoepithelium. And here we can see the dilated muscle coming down through here, pigmented epithelium coming in through here. And then here we can see uh, the constrictor muscle. So this is a constrictor muscle. And this is the posterior chamber and the anterior chamber. Oddly enough, there is no epithelial lining uh, of, the an, of the anterior portion uh, of the iris. So we have the pupil the opening in through the, the iris in through here is what we're seeing uh, in through uh, here. Lens, lens capsule, and on the uh, anterior portion of the lens you have these little cuboidal cells, cuboidal cells which ultimately in the bow region give rise to the lens fibers. And so here we can see, as I mentioned to you before, the cornea developing, and then also part of the, the retina coming up through there, and it's actually part of the part of the of the iris itself. Here we can see it in the drawing where the, the retina comes in. There is your optic nerve coming in there, your retina. So optic nerve, retina, and then those two layers continue on underneath the iris, and are the dilated muscle, and uh, the uh, uh, the dilated muscle uh, and the, the pigmented layer that prevents a backscatter of light. So two of the main functions of this regulating light is actually coming from uh, coming from the optic optic nerve lens, as we can see. Here we can see the um, uh, the constrictor is actually smooth muscle cells as opposed to the dilated muscle, which is myoepithelium. On the lens, we can see a nice cube cells here through here, uh, and the and the lens capsule. You can see the capsule is quite big on the anterior surface. So uh, if we uh, look at the uh, at the lens, here we see the lens coming in through here. Actually developed before the cornea did because it got to gain access to the outside. So it's from the outside, and see how it folds back on itself. When it folds back on itself, then the little cube cells of the lens are on the anterior surface, not in the posterior surface, uh, and that's why you have these on the anterior surface uh, in the in the uh, adult eye. As you see, you do not do not have them on the posterior surface because it's right in the bow region that these cube cells give rise to the fibers which run uh, along the, the path uh, of the light. So. Uh, as you have the infolding in through there and back, really uh, the base is on the outside in such that the capsule itself is really the basement membrane. It's a shared basement membrane uh, of, these, of these cells. It's thicker on the anterior surface than the posterior surface, as you will see. So if we look at the cube cells, there are these cells here. What got folded back on itself as through there uh, and the capsule. Uh, is the base of those. So this is the apex, that's the base of these, uh, uh, this particular cell. So this is the anterior portion uh, of, the, of the lens and the posterior portion of the lens 
has a very a fairly thin uh, a thin capsule, not thick like we see there. And so uh, here we're seeing the, the, this is the capsule of the base of the back, as we can see, and the capsule is shared a basement membrane of the lens fibers. And so a uh, lens fibers, which is what uh, we see here, uh, in this case, is the basement membrane because the things are flipped, as I mentioned to you. So here we see the, the iris again, uh, the pigmented uh, layer, uh, the constrictor muscle, dilator muscle, uh, the uh, ciliary processes, uh, and these are actually these are ropes or ligaments or zonules. And if we look at the lens again, uh, we can see the, the anterior uh, surface, you have the pigmented, uh, the, the, the cuboidal epithelial cells in a thick capsule as we see here and here. So this is a lens cuboidal uh, epithelium. Uh, that is on the surface of them. Uh, right in the bow region, right where it turns here, like a bow and arrow, the bow region, these little cube cells, which you see here and here, give rise to the lens fibers. You can see where they, the cells are elongated, and, and they become the lens fibers themselves. And so the lens fibers run like this, which is down, to which the light goes straight down, uh, down the fibers. Limb cuboidal cells give rise to the, and here we can see the capsule. The capsule, you can see just a little bit of it, very thick uh, in through there. And so uh, here we can see the lens, there's the anterior surface, which has the cuboidal cells, the posterior surface do not. Both of them have capsules, uh, and also both of them attach to the zonules. These are ligaments or zonules, uh, which upon contraction of the ciliary muscle, uh, they pull or loosen pressure uh, on the uh, on the lens itself, and here you can see uh, where uh, one of those zonules is attaching to the surface of the lens. There's a higher magnet over here, a zonule attaching to the capsule on this uh, anterior surface of the lens. You can see it over here too. Another one over there. You can see where the zonule is actually attaching uh, to the capsule. It pulls on a capsule and that changes the shape of the lens. When the ciliary muscle contracts, uh, it loosens the pressures on the zonules. Uh, and so uh, when it does that, the lens goes to a more spherical shape. And that's what it wants for close vision. Uh, if you're uh, uh, hiking, looking at a distance, uh, then your ciliary muscle is not contracted. Uh, and that pulls more on the uh, zonules, which uh, makes the lens more flat. Um, uh, so it's actually uh, changes the shape of the lens from what it wants to be. It wants to be more round. Um, if you look at the posterior surface of the lens, you can see that you don't have those cuboidal epithelial cells uh, and also the, uh, the shared uh, capsule or basement membrane of these fibers uh, is just uh, not as thick. And we can see that again here. This is the capsule of the anterior surface and the capsule of the posterior surface that you can see there. So here's the zonules. And note that the zonules come in through all the way down here to the oral serrata, which is a region that no longer is photosensitive. It doesn't have photosensitive cells. So this is continuous with the retina. The pigmented layer that here is continuous with the pigmented layer of the retina that we will learn about. So here's the sclera, gorilla, ciliary bodies, uh, ciliary processes, uh, ciliary muscle, uh, as we can see, and this collectively is a ciliary body. So uh, here we can see uh, at the other end is the optic nerve coming in, the optic nerve coming in uh, uh, and giving rise to the retina on either side. And so we have the retina here. Uh, there's no photoreceptor cells here. That's why you have a blind spot. Pigmented epithelial cells, you can see them right in through there, right in through there. A more higher mag, this is one cell. There's a nucleus, there's another You can see the pigmented uh, layers that you see there, uh, the, uh, the combs and the rods uh, and the nuclei of the photoreceptor cells and the pigmented cells, and this is a choroid. The choroid is right in through there, elaborate. Uh, blood vessels uh, of the choroid plexus that is uh, in there. 
as we can see. And so basically there's uh, several layers uh, of the, of the um, retina, but we'll just uh, mention a few. Uh, we'll uh, mention uh, the retina is composed, as far as our purposes, uh, the ganglion cells, the bipolar cells, the photoreceptor cells, and the pigmented epithelium, and the choroid uh, below. So we can see those. There's a vitreous body up through here. The light would be coming down in through here. This is the ganglion cells. That's the one that talks to the brain. Bipolar cells. This space here is artifact. Shouldn't be there. These are the cell bodies of the of the uh, photoreceptor cells, the rods and cones, as you can see. And this is a pigmented layer. The pigmented layer here is the same as the pigmented layer we see there. But that's a photosensitive portion of the rods and cones. It's right in through uh, through there. See the rich vascular supply of the choroid uh, and the sclera. So we can see the ones that are rods. These are the nuclei. These cells, photoreceptor portion of them. Pigmented epithelium there. Combs look like ice cream comb, and uh, and the the rods is what we see. So uh, the optic nerve is coming in uh, through here, uh, as you see, and then here's uh, the retina. The retina over here, pigmented epithelium. You should not have a space in through there. These guys actually touch in through there. But the pigmented epithelium, you can see it like this is one cell. There's another cell. Here's its nucleus, and it has melanin granules. The melanin granules prevent the backscatter of light. So any light that goes through there is absorbed and doesn't uh, uh, defocus the image or disturb the image because uh, you... Uh, uh, because it is absorbed. Now, if this was a nocturnal animal, uh, it would not uh, reflect light. Uh, it would allow reflect light because it would not be pigmented uh, in certain areas. That's what's reflecting back from the eye is that you see it through there. And there's actually another connective tissue, uh, tapetum lucinum, right in through there. We don't see it in humans, but it'd be another little layer in through there. Uh, that reflects back to let a lion be able to see at night. Not well, but better than uh, not seeing at all. Choroid, choroid plexus, sclera. And you can see blood vessels in the retina. Uh, rods and cones, we can see uh, the optic nerve coming in through there. These stretches here are really artifactual space that shouldn't be there. You can also see capillaries in through there too. Photoreceptor cells, bipolar cells, ganglion cells. We want to acknowledge the original sources of figures, uh, images, and uh, drawings uh, that we uh, have taken from various uh, textbooks uh, and original sources, and we want to acknowledge those here. So this is the end of the eye uh, presentation on the iris, the pigmentation, dilated constrictor muscle, the embryology, uh, the lens, uh, epithelium, the capsule, the zonules, uh, and uh, retinal features and functions, the blind spot, and the choroid.